Hi, Michelle from Birdcage and Thread here with a tutorial for a mug bag and a coordinating mug rug. This bag is great to take to sewing retreats and classes, or you can even take it to work as a cute desk accessory. It has a convenient carrying handle, as well as a loop closure with a button. The inner bag keeps your mug safe and you have two inner pockets, one to hold tea bags and sugar and the back to hold the coordinating mug rug. If you've never seen a mug rug before, it's a cross between a coaster and a plate. So one side you can place your mug or cup on and you have a place next to it to put your snack. You can see that I've used a regular sized coffee cup but I'll also show you that one of the larger size cups also fit inside. I'll put the fabric requirements and measurements in the description box below for easy reference. Quarter inch seam allowances are used throughout. So grab your supplies and let's get sewing. The bag consists of two parts the outer casing and the inner bag which holds the mug. So we'll make the mug bag first, then move on to making the matching mug rug. So to make the mug bag, you'll need to cut the following pieces. Outer casing fabric, lining casing fabric, which consists of two pieces, which will be joined later. Some mesh for the mesh pocket and binding for the mesh pocket, fabric handle, inner pocket, two lining pieces for the bag itself that holds the mug and two outer pieces of the bag that holds the mug. Now for each of these fabric pieces you'll need to cut SF101 interfacing as well. The interfacing for the lining of the casing is cut as one piece and that gets fused later. So don't fuse the, the SF101 to the casing lining just yet. So fuse the SF101 to all the other pieces except for the binding of the mesh pocket. That doesn't require SF101. You'll also cut some batting for the outer of the mug pocket, oh sorry, the mug bag, which holds the actual mug itself. And then fuse that to the back of the SF101, which you've fused on first. You'll also need a piece of elastic or ribbon and a button for a closure. So to make the bag that holds the mug, take one of the squares of fabric and mark at the bottom of two of the corners that are next to each other. Mark one and a half inches in and one and a half inches down. So you'll have a one and a half inch square marked at the bottom of one corner and repeat with the same on the opposite corner. Then you'll repeat the same for the other outer piece and the two lining pieces. Once you have those pieces marked, you're going to cut out those corners. Once you have the corners cut out of both the outer and the lining, you're going to place an outer right side up and a lining right side down. So the two fabrics are right side together, lining up all the raw edges. Then using a quarter inch seam allowance, you're going to sew a seam across the top here opposite where the corners are. Then you're going to repeat for the other piece. So this is the outer and the lining right sides together. And again, quarter inch seam allowance and sew a seam across here, which is opposite the corners. Once the seams are sewn, you're going to open the seam out and press, and you're going to press the seam allowances towards the outer piece. Now that you have a lining and an outer sewn together on both sides, you have the seam allowance pressed towards the outer. Now we're going to sew the bag together. So place one on top of the other right sides together, 
lining up the lining and the outer pieces. Then you're going to stitch around these raw edges here and you're going to leave a gap in the lining bottom of about two or so inches. Now that you have all the outer edges sewn with a gap left in the bottom lining for turning, you're going to box each of the corners. So open out the corner and match up the two sides or the side and the bottom seam. And then using a quarter inch seam allowance, stitch across this edge here. Then you're going to repeat the same with the other three corners. Once the corners are sewn, you're going to turn the bag right side out through the opening in the lining. Then you're going to hand or machine stitch the opening closed, tucking in the raw ends. Then push the lining down inside the outer. Then you're going to top stitch along this edge here. Now the bag is complete, you can place that aside for now and we're going to work on the pockets for the outer casing. So take the fabric pocket and place it wrong side up. Then you're going to fold it in half, wrong sides together so the short edges meet. Press along the fold there and you're going to top stitch along the fold. Next we're going to make the mesh pocket. So take the binding strip and place it wrong side up on your ironing board. Fold it in half, wrong sides together along the long edge there. Open that out and then fold both of the long raw edges to the centre. Then refold that centre crease. Then you're going to place that binding over the edge of the mesh and top stitch along the binding to hold the binding in place. So you're going to place that mesh inside the binding there, fold it over like that and then top stitch along that folded edge to secure. So now we're going to sew the pockets to the lining casing. And the lining casing has two pieces. So take the longer of the two pieces and you're going to stack the pockets on top. So you're firstly going to take the fabric pocket and place it so you're matching all the raw edges up and you're matching that short raw edge at the bottom there. Then you're going to stack the mesh pocket on top of that. And then you're going to baste around these three edges there. Once you've done that, you're going to take the shorter piece of the lining casing and place it right side down over the pockets and using a quarter inch seam allowance, stitch across that seam there or that edge there. Then you're going to open out and press that seam. Now that you have the pockets sewn to the lining and you've sewn the two lining pieces together, you've pressed this open and it's optional whether you want to top stitch along there or not. So you can see there's a mesh pocket and a fabric pocket. Now we're going to turn the lining wrong side up and you're going to take the SF101 piece and place it fusible side down to the wrong side of the lining piece. And take that to your ironing board and fuse the lining to the interfacing. Next we're going to shape both the lining and the outer of the casing pieces. So you're going to round these corners but make sure you round the corners at the top. So in other words make sure it's above the pocket openings. I have a downloadable worksheet with a template to help you round the corners. Or if you have one of these rulers, these corner rulers, you can place that in the corner and I'm using the one and a half inch radius corner. So you can just trace around there or cut using your rotary cutter. So you do that both for the lining and the outer casing pieces. 
that you've rounded the corners on both the outer and the lining, you're going to take the outer piece and fold it in half so that the rounded corners meet. And you're going to mark the centre top there. Open that back out and you've got a centre crease. Then you're going to place a loop of elastic or ribbon. This is three and a half inches long. You're going to fold it in half and you're going to place it along that raw edge there with the loop inside the fabric or facing this part of the fabric. And you'll base that in place. Once you've done that, you're going to place the two fabrics right sides together and you're going to stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire bag, leaving a gap along this short end for turning right side out. Now you've sewn around the edge and you've left a gap for turning, you're going to clip the corners off, being careful not to cut through the stitching there. So do that at each of the corners. Then you're going to cut notches in the rounded edges. Then you're going to turn the whole thing right side out. Once you've turned it right side out, and you've pushed the rounded corners out as well as these corners here you're going to take it to your ironing board and press the seams flat you're also going to tuck these raw edges in as well and press then from the outer you're going to top stitch along all the edges and as you top stitch you're going to secure that opening closed now that you have the bag completed and the casing finished, we're going to put the two together. So you start by pressing along this edge, bottom edge here. So take it to your ironing board and where these points meet here, pinch it there and press that or that edge there with your iron. Then you're going to repeat on the other side. So pinch it at this corner seam here and press. Once you've done that you're going to line up that pressed edge along this seam line here. Then you're going to hand stitch the bag to the outer casing there. Once that's stitched you're going to place a mug inside the bag and you're going to bring this other edge up on the other side of the bag. Then you're going to hand stitch across this short edge here so you, you're stitching the casing to the bag. Now we have the outer casing sewn to the bag. We're going to put it aside for now. We're going to work on the handle. So take the handle piece and place it wrong side up on your ironing board. Fold it in half, wrong sides together and press. Open that back out and fold the long raw edges to the center. Now normally when you make a handle, you refold the crease that way, but we're going to do the handle different so that we end up with no raw edges at the end. So once you've pressed the, the long raw edges to the center, you're going to fold it the other way. So I've turned it so that the, the raw edges are underneath. Then I'm going to fold it back this way. So you can see that the raw edges are here and you've got a fold in the center there. Then you're going to press that down and stitch quarter inch seam along both short ends. So this is what your handle should look like so far. You've got the raw edges here with a fold in the center and you've got the seam line at each short end. Then you're going to trim the corners, being careful not to cut your stitching. Do that on both ends.
Then you're going to turn the handle right side out. poking out those corners. Once you've done that, you're going to top stitch around all the four edges. Now that you have the handle sewn, you're going to place a mug inside the bag. Then you're going to fold the top of the bag down. just to make sure that that edge there is covered. And it's about two inches that you fold down. Once that's folded down, you're going to bring the flap up and over the top. Next, you're going to take a marker and mark where, the, where you'll sew the button, so at the bottom of the loop there. So I'll sew a button there. Once that button has been sewn on, you're going to center the handle along this flat edge here. You can just eyeball it or you can line it, use the seam at the side of the bag to work out where the center is. So you stitch a square on this side to secure the handle, then bring the other side up and stitch a square, approximately an inch square, both sides. So now that's the mug bag finished, we're going to move on to making the mug rug to go inside this fabric pocket here. So to start the mug rug, you have the fabric that's going to form the heart. And so this is two and a half inches by four and a half inches, but I'll put the measurements in the description box below. So you have two of those You've got two two and a half inch squares and four one inch squares. So firstly on the wrong side of the fabric of the, both the large and the small squares you're going to draw a diagonal line with a removable marker and it doesn't matter which direction because you can rotate your pieces. So start by doing that then you're going to place each of these fabrics right sides together on the heart piece or the main fabric that's going to form the heart. And basically you're making a heart shape with the two pieces. So pay attention to which way the line is facing. So mine, they should be going in towards the center there with the large ones. With the small ones, they go from top to bottom there and same with the other side from top to bottom or from the center out to the side lining up the raw edges again from the center to the side and same with the last one lining up the raw edges from the center to the side and you can see there's a heart shape forming then take each of these one at a time to your machine and stitch along each of those lines that you marked on the diagonal. Once you have each of these lines sewn down here, you're going to trim off the excess, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. So that's one side of the heart. And the 
is the other side. So take that to your ironing board and press each of these triangles outwards. Now you've pressed each of these seams open, we're going to place them right sides together and stitch down that centre. So right sides together, making sure you line up your points here and using a quarter inch seam allowance, stitch along this length here. Open out and press the seam allowances open. Now you have the heart block sewn, you're going to sew the other top piece to the heart block. So you can either place the heart on the right or on the left. It's up to you which way you, you sew it. So I'm going to have the heart on the right. So place the two pieces right sides together and then stitch a quarter inch seam down that edge there. Now that you have the heart block sewn to the other top piece of the mug rug, you're going to fuse the batting to the wrong side of the top here. So place it wrong side up with the fusible side to the wrong side and fuse that in place. Then you're going to take the backing and place it wrong side down over the batting. You can use pins to hold it in place and then you're going to quilt the top or quilt the sandwich that you have. I'd suggest only doing light quilting because it will shrink if you do too much quilting. So I'm just going to stitch in the ditch here and just quilt on this heart piece here. So now your mug rug is quilted, we're going to trim it down to seven and a quarter by four and a quarter. So basically you're almost just taking off uh, one eighth of an inch all around. So just do that with your ruler so it's precise. Again, that's seven and a quarter wide by four and a quarter inches high. Once you've trimmed your quilt down to seven and a quarter wide by four and a quarter high, you're going to baste all the edges together using about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're going to attach the binding. So the method I'm using is a little unconventional because we're working on such a small quilt. I'm going to make a loop of binding which will fit this exactly if you're precise with your seam allowances. So take the binding fabric and fold it in half lengthwise wrong sides together and press down the entire length of the binding. Then you're going to form a loop, open it out and fold it right sides together so you have a loop. Then you're going to twist the top 90 degrees like that. So you start off, I'll do that again, you've started off with a loop right sides together. Then you're going to twist that top fabric down and you're going to line up these short raw edges here. You can draw a line from this corner up here to where this corner is down here on this top fabric. And then you're going to stitch along that line. Now you have this seam stitched here, you're going to trim off the excess here, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Next you're going to open that out and press. So you pull your seam allowances to each side and press your seam open. So now the seam allowances have been pressed open, you're going to refold that centre crease in the binding. So you should now have a continuous loop of binding. And we're going to attach this to the quilt. So I'm going to start by attaching the seam there to this bottom edge. And just one to clip that in place and you're lining up the raw edges of the binding with the raw edge of the quilt. Once you get to a corner, you're going to Fold it like you do a traditional binding in a quilt. So you can fold that back at a 45 degree angle, 
making sure the raw edges of the quilt and the binding are one long continuous straight edge here. And you can see I've got the 45 degree angle fold happening there. Then you pick the binding up and fold it back over, making the next fold in line with this raw edge. And just want to clip that in place. And continue clipping the binding around the edge. You're going to do the same here. Fold the binding back at a 45 degree angle, making sure the raw edge of the quilt and the binding is in a straight line. You're going to fold the binding back. So there's a fold here in line with the raw edge of the quilt. Now once you get to the edges, it gets a little bit tighter here. So what you can do is just line up the raw edges like that. And you can see I've pinched into the corner like that. Then you could just fold that down like that. Just makes it a bit easier when you get into tight spots. And same when you get to the end. Just push the fabric into the corner and fold it back. So now you know that the binding is going to fit. You're going to have to sew it like you normally would a binding. So you're going to have to take these off and sew up to here. Then sew off the edge, take it off your machine press this fold back and continue along there. This is just to make sure that the binding does actually fit. So go ahead and stitch the binding down to the quilt. So now your binding is stitched down to the quilt. You're going to turn the binding to the back side and you can machine or hand stitch the other side of the binding in place making sure to mitre each of the corners. So you fold that over, then fold the other edge over. Once you've stitched the other side of the binding down to the underside of the mug rug, your mug rug is complete. All you need to do now is pop your favorite mug in the bag. Then you can fold up the mug rug in half and place that in the fabric pocket at the back. And you have the front mesh pocket for tea bags and sugar and things like that. Then you just fold it over, close it up using the loop and button. And that's your project complete. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks for watching.